Hello and welcome to another episode of Play by Play. Today we're watching Lutterworth Meteors versus London Storm at National League Meet 7 from a couple of weeks ago. We're in the early stages of the game and London Storm are just about to even things up in this set with a nice two ball attack on Joe Brown there. So uh, Meteors with two balls and they're going to come forward and with a two ball attack of their own make a nice hit on Steve as he tries to dodge to the side here. And then a delayed throw against Johnny Day gets the hit on the feet. Uh, leaving just Dan Gittings in on the London Storm side. And on the Meteor side, we've got Tim Day on the right-hand side holding a ball there, just applying a little bit of pressure, fakes a throw, Dan drops for the catch, but just a fake, so picks his balls back up, a couple of seconds to throw, throws a safe one, then looks for a little nick on the feet. Can't find it. Most teams here probably hold and go with three balls, but Tim says, no thanks, let's end the set right there. Unfortunately, the keen-eyed line ref on the right-hand side is telling him that the ball that he threw is not actually live, and in a moment of frustration, uh, Tim does that. Tim leaps over the center line and secures the hit. He does hit Dan Gittings um, as he's setting up to restart the set, but half of the players are back on court, half of the refs are on court. Uh, nobody was really expecting that. So let's have a look at what just happened. Going all the way back to when Meteors had four balls, we can see this ball on the right here has been held by the Retriever. And then as the pass comes back, I think Tim just fumbles it for a second and maybe breaks his concentration. And now his foot is just in front of the orange line, which you cannot see. However, I believe it is where the white line is just behind his foot. He needs to have both feet behind that line. And you can see here the line ref is staring straight at that foot watching to see if he takes it back to make that ball that he's picked up live and he does not that is as far back as he goes so that ball in tim's hand now is not live it does not count if it's thrown so then when tim comes charging up to make this hit it is justifiably not a hit and you can see immediately waves it off says it's not a hit dan come back on that hit does not count explains it to tim but Tim is, is saying, I had it back here, I had it back here, and uh, the line ref says no. So Tim does that. Now, let's not worry too much about why Tim did that. It's probably one of those things that you look back at and go, why did I do that? For now, let's just worry about the referees. So, have a look here. The head ref, under this red arrow, is going to watch what happens, and then go to turn back to his scoreboard to change the score. However... He then stops and sees the line ref here, signaling that it's not right, the ball is not live, and then he says, no, it's a hit, there you go, that's definitely a hit. Tim, however, is not looking at him when he does that. You can see here, he is looking only at the line ref, so he does not see the signal that like the centre ref has called it a hit. As far as he is concerned, the line ref has said, no hit. That's the only thing that I can think is to why it, you know, he still did that. That being said, the set is very much over. There's line refs on court. Uh, you can see Dan's foot here. He's, he's off court already, so if the set's still going, then he's already out. So um, I think it's quite clear that the set is over and the ref's decision should reflect the fact that, you know, you kind of hit someone that is not ready for it. So I think the correct decision here is at least a yellow card, if not a red card. The referee is going to take a long time to deliberate over this and talk it through. Uh, and then I think the decision is made is that it's a penalty set. So Tim would miss the rest of the current set and then the next set. So the teams line up and then the line ref points out, well, if that's a blue card, if that's a penalty set, then Tim is out and the set resumes. Because the hit against Dan was not a legal hit, the ball was not live, so Dan is still in. So Dan lines up against three Meteors players. Unfortunately, he is immediately hit out. But wait, three Meteors players? I remember way back when, when Storm made this two ball attack and made a hit, Meteors only had three players left on court. So when Dan lines up again against three Meteors players instead of what should have been two, this becomes a much harder play. He could have had a 2v1 here, which, while still favouring the Meteors side, is much more likely that Dan could make a comeback. Now, finally, before we end things, let's just have a, a little look at some of the reactions from this because they are just brilliant. Firstly, you've got another line ref in black and the ball retriever in white, just in disbelief at what just happened. You have the Meteor's outbox. A uh, bit surprised by the whole not live situation, but even more surprised by the choice of resolution from Tim. Not really sure what to say at this point. 
And then the best reaction of all, as soon as he sees Tim pick up this ball, this lion ref backs off, knows what's happening, and loves it. So, moral of the story? It ain't over till it's over. And even then, sometimes it's not over. Catch you in the next one.